Today, we take another look at character modeling in Blender. I'm going to show you my whole up-to-date process, from starting with the basic sketch, all the way through to my final 3D model. But as always, my name is Keelan, and welcome to my video on how to create amazing 3D characters in Blender. Before we get started, we need a concept. And you can either try to create a piece from an artist you like, or why not try sketching something yourself? In this case, I'm going to be sketching my own concept, but it's currently 8 a.m. here in the UK. So before we get started, let's go ahead and make some coffee. Okay, we're back. So my preferred source of inspiration is Pinterest. And I generally browse for around 20 minutes or so, selecting between five and six pieces that I like for a mood board. Perfect, I love these. And if you're one of the artists behind these pieces, thank you, you are amazing. But now it's time to go ahead and grab your tools to start sketching. Now, sometimes I use a pencil and paper for this, but today we're gonna be jumping into Procreate on my iPad. Now I like Procreate because we can take advantage of some of the awesome digital tools that we have access to. Because I'm not actually the best at 2D illustrations, so I need all the help I can get. And as a tip, you can use the symmetry tool here in Procreate to make drawing symmetrical features a lot easier. Now hit that music and let's do this. Okay, I think that'll do for my sketch, and I kept this pretty basic for now, as I'll be adding a lot more detail during the 3D sculpt. But now it's time to bring this little guy to life, and to do that, we're going to need to transition over to my computer to begin creating the 3D model. And my software of choice is the one and only Blender. Now, if you've never heard of Blender before, it's an amazingly powerful 3D modeling software that lets you create 3D models, CGI and animations, and in my case, I'm just going to be using it to create my 3D character. Which brings us nicely into the next step in my modeling process. This step just involves using very basic shapes in Blender to block out the general shape of my character. Think of this as just grabbing little bits of clay to help define the initial base of your model. And as you can see, I've also loaded my sketch into the background to help me with my proportions. During this process, I generally start with the head and slowly work my way down the character using some of the basic sculpting brushes in Blender to help grab and shape my objects as I go along. Personally, I've always leaned quite heavily into stylized characters, so generally features such as the head, the hands and the feet are quite a bit larger than realistic proportions. But reference is always key for these sort of things, so I often look up some additional references as I go along here to help with the anatomy of my characters. Alright, I'm happy with this rough block out, and with that, step 2 is complete. For this next step, we're going to start sculpting the details, so I like to plug in a tablet for that extra bit of control. And just in case anyone asks, I'm currently using a Canvas Pro 16 from Huon. Now when it comes to sculpting my characters, I like to start with the head, and the process of sculpting in Blender generally goes like this. You start with a lower poly object as you define the basic shapes, and then slowly add more topology to your mesh for the finer details. I like to do this in sculpt mode using Blender's remesh tool, and I'll slowly keep increasing the amount of detail I have until I've got enough for the lips, the eyes and the nose, and all these extra little details and the remesh option is also going to merge these nicely into one object for me. Alright this is looking pretty cool and I've also added some UV spheres here to help with the placement of my eyes too. And yes this guy is looking quite grumpy but I love my characters with a little bit of attitude. Now let's carry on and refine the body too using the same method. And 
now it's time to add some hair. But obviously, hair can come in all different shapes and sizes when it comes to 3D modeling, but right now I'm leaning more towards a nice rounded plastic look. And to do this, I generally start by sculpting out the base of the hair, and then I add in some additional rounded cubes to block out the general style that I'm looking for, before I then go ahead and remesh and smooth this over for a nice finish. Oof, that's looking pretty good to me. Now I've been here for quite some time, so I'm gonna take a break for today and head to the cinema. Okay, I'm back and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was pretty good, but it's day two and today is the day we finish this. First up, clothing. For this, I use a couple of methods, but it all depends on what you need at the time. But generally, it boils down to two main approaches. Firstly, in the mask extract. Simply paint a mask on the area you want to reuse, hit mask extract in the menu and boom, you've got a new mesh you can sculpt and reuse. The other method is just good old fashioned box modeling. Add the basic shapes that you need and then sculpt them into shape. Yeah, this is looking good. But I do need to optimize this guy just a little bit. And we all know that manual retopology is absolute. So insert my secret weapon, the quad remesher add-on. Simply enter the amount of polygons you want, hit the button, and wow, literally the best purchase of my life. Pair this with a multi-resolution modifier, and now you've got a lower poly mesh for rigging and a higher poly mesh for the render. I already retopologized the main body too using the add-on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate part of the mesh here for the trousers. For anything less organic, such as the shoes, I tend to model these sort of things with regular box modeling. In this case, I start from the bottom, work my way up until I have my lovely big clown shoes. There we have our finished clothing. I thought he looked a bit plain, so I also gave him some gloves, some socks, and a cool jacket too. I was thinking Back to the Future vibes. But before we go ahead and jump into the last section, then a quick word from today's sponsor, and that is yours truly, me. So here's a quick word from Keelan from the future while I go water my succulents. Hey, this is Keelan from the future, and I just wanted to pop in and quickly tell you about my Blender for Beginners course. Now this course I have packed with everything I have learned over my years of learning Blender, and in this course, I will cover everything from installing Blender for the first time, all the way through to modeling, sculpting, lighting, rigging, rendering, and so much more. You'll have access to this course for life, including the many additional modules I have planned for release in the future too. So if you're perhaps interested in starting your Blender journey with me, check out the link in the description below, and thank you for listening today. Alright guys, we're so close to the end now, stick with me. Next up, it's time to add some colour to this character using Blender's default shader. Where it gets a little bit different is the eyes. In this case, I use one material for the white of the eyes and I apply a separate material to the inner section. Then I use a basic node setup, combining a gradient node with a color ramp to achieve my desired look. To go the extra mile, I also like to add an additional sphere around the eye with a very transmissive material. And if you play around with the inverse of refraction too, it creates a nice lens type effect. To finish, I just like to add a little bit of rosiness to my character's face. And in this case, I just plugged a color attribute node into my default shader so I could vertex paint some color directly onto my sculpt. And I also add just a little bit of subsurface scattering for the cherry on top. And all that's left to do now is for me to give this guy a quick rig for posing and then to add some lights for some cinematic renders. But thank you so much for watching today my friends and don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's do this. Yo, what? What's going on with his 
face, dude. What's, what is that? Whoa. Dude, your head come out of the screen. 